Hey guys, so um, today's topic is one that I have admittedly been kind of avoiding talking about a little bit, um, which is uh, boners when it comes to wrestling. And I've been um, avoiding it because it's one of those topics that is um, not as straightforward as you would think, right? So um, the thing is, is that I'm, I'm talking about it now because a lot of people have been joining the Facebook group specifically and commenting that uh, when they answer the questions that one of their goals is to figure out how to not uh, get boners in when they join a wrestling team or a club or something along those lines. And, um, you know, the first thing that I need to tell you is that, um, you know, we are men. Um, if we are uh, cisgendered men, then we have penises that are going to show up through our wrestling singlets. Um, we do get boners from time to time. Um, it's just part of what we are as human men. Um, and so, you know, when do men tend to get boners, right? Um, first thing in the morning, um, when stimulated, when doing the freaking dishes, when uh, you're doing your taxes, um, when, you know, we just get boners at just the weirdest times, um, as well as times that make sexual sense. Um, spontaneous erections are just a thing that happened to men, um, and it doesn't matter what the task is, we can get them. And, you know, we get this, um, kind of distorted reality when it comes to wrestling and uh, erections. And part of that distorted reality is that, um, you know, a lot of people go to wrestling matches, they film wrestlers or they find wrestling photos or things like that, and when a wrestler is in competition and wearing a singlet and he happens to get a boner during competition, then that photo gets shared or that video gets shared and it gets shared a lot more than all the other uh, videos and photos tend to. And so we get this distorted reality where we think that boners are just absolutely everywhere when it comes to wrestling. And um, that's kind of, um, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of people making comments in groups and whatnot saying that, you know, you know, wrestling is just one big circle jerk, that, um, you know, all wrestlers are gay and things like that. And what that does, in my opinion, is it creates um, kind of a toxic environment for gay people to actually enter into wrestling. And it actually makes it um, harder for straight people to enter into wrestling as well, because straight people don't want to be thought of as being gay. And also, um, it paints uh, gay people as being, you know, sexual predators when they go into a wrestling club. And that can uh, stir up a lot of homophobia. And so the thing is, is that if you were to talk to a non-wrestler, they, they're going to have all these preconceived notions about, um, you know, whether or not uh, wrestling is a gay sport. It's not. And whether or not it is um, uh, just a big circle jerk or what, whatever you want to post, say about it. Um, you know, those are coming from people who have never actually participated in the fucking sport. Um, and a lot of them are gay men, and they're propagating things that actually are going to lead to more homophobia. So it's really important for us to have a honest discussion about, um, you know, the uh, whether or not gays can even participate in wrestling in a mixed uh, sexuality environment. And the fact of the matter is, is that when, and I'm speaking, so... Um, I'll say this, is that I've been wrestling since 2003. I have been doing it for 19 years, okay? Um, and a lot of those, the, my matchups have been um, with people I find off of Meat Fighters and the predecessors like Takedown Wrestling when that was a thing, uh, Global Fight when uh, it was the site, um, as, if, as if they would ever update it, um, or when that was uh, Headlock Wrestling way back when in 2003. Um, and so we've had all these different sites kind of come and go. Um, and in that time, I've probably wrestled with, you know, maybe a hundred people at this point. Um, and the thing about that is, is that 
there are very few times when I got an erection in any of that time, and I am not impotent, okay? And these are, you know, me meeting up with gay people who may have wrestling fantasies, they may sexualize wrestling, but once it came down to actually doing it, and if we were doing it for competitive reasons, right, we were actually wrestling for the sake of wrestling, the odds of us both getting an erection or either one of us getting an erection were actually pretty slim. It happened. It does happen. When you are on a high school wrestling team or a college wrestling team, you get boners from time to time. And people reach this uh, certain point of maturity where they understand that boners are just something that is going to happen. Um, and if you are wearing a Speedo or you are wearing a wrestling singlet, people are probably going to notice that you have a boner. And you just have to focus on the wrestling and continue going. Right. And so, you know, if you were to actually look and, you know, you don't have to take my word for this, you look on NHP Battle, you look on, um, well, the, the old videos for NHP Battles, Move Miss Wrestling, um, you look at BG East, you look at UCW or any number of the wrestling video uh, companies that are out there now, and you actually pay attention. Um, if somebody is not actively, you know, trying to jerk somebody off, they're not, they're not making out, they're not if they're just wrestling, how often do you actually see that anybody has a boner? You can see their dick, yeah, um, as we're re wearing revealing attire. You can see their penis, but is it actually hard? Most of the time, even when it's two gay men going at it, you're not going to see a boner. Um, it's just, it's not really as common as a lot of those photos that you see on the internet um, are painting it to be. So, um, you know, the question I have for you, um, and I, I do have, I have my notes in my horrible handwriting here because I wanted to keep myself um, kind of on topic here, but, um, uh, you know, as I kind of touched on already, these fantasies about, you know, saying that, um, wrestling is just a big circle jerk that um, everybody's there and uh, because they have got repre repressed homosexuality creates an unsafe environment uh, for gay people to enter into wrestling. But that being said, it has not been my particular experience and, you know, I'm living in Washington State it, and in Seattle, Tacoma area. This is a relatively liberal area. So, um, you know, when I've gone to BJJ schools, I've done no-gi, I've done things like that. Um, you know, people have been, even when I was over in Maine, people have been generally accepting the fact that I was gay, or that I am gay, and that I've been actually welcomed in uh, consistently in most places. Um, the only time I wasn't was when, it was when I was at uh, Origin BJJ up in Maine. Um, and, you know, the owner, uh, Pete, had uh, was afraid that I was going to give everybody at the school AIDS. Um, and, you know, I don't even have HIV or any SDIs. Um, so, you know, that you can run into in certain parts of the country, people who have that mindset, but generally speaking, people have a pretty mature attitude, um, with, you know, you, when it comes to wrestling, like if you're not comfortable seeing another man's bone, or if you're not comfortable with, um, uh, close body contact, then you're doing the wrong sport. We do north-south position. We get into positions where our crotches can end up in other people's faces. That doesn't happen that often. Um, oil checking doesn't happen that often. It does happen, but, you know, things um, get close. And so a lot of, if people aren't comfortable with that closeness, then they're in the wrong sport. And so if you are not sure um, you need to be asking your school or your club or wherever you are, um, about, you know, what happens if somebody finds out I'm gay and, uh, acts in a homophobic way towards me. Um, and it's really the coach's responsibility to say, um, you know, that person would be kicked out of this club. We, we they need to be very clear that they are going to draw the line as far as what is acceptable behavior. Now, if you are always coming into class, um, you're not wearing anything under your singlet, like a wrestling brief or something like that, um, and you're just you know pre coming all over the place, um, that that's probably going to create a problem. But there are you know solutions that I'll get to in a moment about that. Um, so really, you know, I would put this to you. 
first of all, is that um, why are you going into wrestling in the first place, right? If it's so that you can see a lot of dick and, and you can uh, grab and grope people and things like that, then um, you probably shouldn't be wrestling, right? Or at least you should be wrestling off with gay people that you meet off and meet fighters and that's pre-negotiated, right? Um, I'm actually going to flat out say that if you're going into a mixed company wrestling cl club or even a gay one, and you just want to grow up absolutely everybody, you know, that's kind of rapey behavior, right? And you really should not uh, be acting like a sexual predator in the first place. But, you know, getting a boner is going to be a perfectly natural, normal thing to see. So, um, so if you are going there because you have these sexual fantasies, then really try to keep that to one-on-one -on -one meetings with people that you meet off of, meat fighters or global fight or whatever site you are uh, meeting people off of. I think that's a really, really important point. If you're going there because you are um, really wanting to learn the sport and you're really wanting to develop as a wrestler, then um, you need to get over the fact that you are going to have a boner at some point and somebody's going to notice, all right? Um, people around you are going to have boners. They're going to notice. It happens, and just be mature about it and move on. Um, so, you know, go into your school with the right mentality and focus um, on the, the sport and the skills. It has been my experience that when I'm wrestling, when I'm doing BJJ or whatever I'm doing, I don't often get boners because I am focused on the competitiveness of it. I'm focused on the sport. My mind is not in that um, in that headspace. So... You know, again, it becomes as common as getting a boner while washing the dishes, right? It's not, you know, it's not really a sexual thing for me when I'm actually doing the sport and I'm focusing on the sport. So if you're worried about getting boners all the time when you're wrestling, then you need to be focusing your mind on the activity at hand, right? You are, you should be focusing on trying to get better at wrestling. You should be focusing on, uh, you know, uh, pinning your partner, you should be focused on those things that, um, you know, you're actually there to do. Um, and other ways that you can kind of, um, have fewer boners, um, you know, if you're turned on by wrestling singlets like I am, um, wear them around the house, okay? Don't masturbate in them, don't touch yourself while you're in them, um, if they're turning you on and you actually want to be in that mixed company environment and you don't want to be getting as many boners, then you should be wearing the, the singlet around the house. You should uh, have a couple, some that are tighter than others, and see which ones um, you find that you get more uh, stimulated in, right? And try to focus on making sure that you have... Um, that you're wearing the ones to practice that don't stimulate you as much. Um, and just get very comfortable wearing the singlet and not try not to associate it with sex per se. Um, and then um, other things that you can do, be doing, most people, most wrestlers will actually wear a uh, wrestling brief under their singlet. Um, some people, you know, say, oh, they wear jock straps or something. No, they actually are specific wrestling briefs. Um, Jock straps make it look like, because it's spandex, it makes it look like you've got some kind of lumpy disease under there. So they may not, not be the best uh, choice, but um, most uh, wrestling briefs, they have them in different colors, so they match the singlet that you're wearing, so you can't tell that you're wearing it, or you can get one that matches your skin tone, and that won't show up as much. Um, and that will also, like, if you have a tendency to leak a little bit or things like that, then that's going to create an extra, you know, that's three layers of fabric to prevent... Um, uh, fluids from mixing or whatever. Um, the other thing that's been kind of a trend lately, and it might be more and more of a common trend, is that uh, a lot of wrestling clubs and whatnot are allowing for uh, the Nogi uh, BJJ attire, which is going to be fight shorts over the top of tights or uh, compression shorts and a compression top or even a t-shirt sometimes. Um, and so if you're going to a club that allows that and you're really concerned about boners, you're not going to see the boner through um, the the uh, fight shorts and whatnot. And a lot of th those are actually now being allowed in a lot of competition. Maybe not so much in like a collegiate competition, but they are allowing them um, at different levels and especially in less formal clubs um, that would be 
perfectly acceptable for you to do. The other thing that you can be doing is you can actually study BJJ, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, where you're wearing a gi, which is going to be a heavy, heavy cotton fabric, um, and you've got the uh, the jacket over the top, which actually goes you know below the crotch level in most of them, and so you've got that three layers uh, plus your underwear um, obscuring all that, and it's not the the sexiest attire. I think that. The, the look is very sexy, but like the actual wearing of it is not as sensual as um, as a wrestling singlet is. And so those are different things that you could be doing if you really are caring about getting the sport, but you're too shy about going into an area and wearing something as uh, revealing as a singlet is. So um, that's my kind of two cents on uh, wrestling on with boners and that type of thing. Um, I know that I kind of ranted on quite a bit here, um, but I think it's an important thing for us to have an adult mature conversation that's actually grounded in, in the reality of the sport um, rather than uh, the fantasies that we are getting perpetuated through uh, porn sites and oversharing of um, boner photos from competitions. Um, again, a lot of people are going to have a very mature attitude about it. so. Um, if that's what's keeping you from wrestling, then I think yeah, you need to get over yourself um, and actually put yourself out there and and focus on the sport. And I think that's gonna um, that's gonna your fears are gonna kind of go away over time with all that. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. Um, I know that you know you probably were like, oh yeah, he's gonna talk about boners now. This is exciting and it's gonna be sexy, but. Um, I'm sorry to be a buzzkill, but um, I think it's really important for us to, if we're really thinking about developing and wrestling, that we need to get over the stigma over what naturally happens to a male's body. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. Um, I'll see you soon. Um, hopefully in the next uh, month or two, I'll be actually doing wrestling videos again when I'm not, you know, burning myself with a uh, auger or uh, on the exhaust um, or... Uh, my basement is flooding or stuff like that. It's a lot going on. So I'll see you guys around.